It was the best of times, it was the west of times. All right, enough of this preamble and poetic language. It's time to talk about which of these games is the best, AKA best of the west. Three, two, one, bro. What's up everybody, I'm Michael E. Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murph and we quite like the Architects, the Paladins, the Viscounts of the West Kingdom, or the whole West Kingdom trilogy games, which is made by Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonald and produced by Garpill Games, and then Renegade Games is mass distributed at places. Uh, this is a really fun series of games that are all independent and their own thing, but they all take place in a similar world, in a similar time, and they kind of will tell a story uh, in its way with architects being kind of the early days uh, where architects are kind of building up a new uh, regime, a new kingdom. And then during Paladins of the West Kingdom, there's outsiders and barbarians coming from, from afar that you have to kind of protect yourself against. And the Paladins or the Noble Paladins are coming to ward these outsiders off and convert them. You're trying to build up fortifications. And then in Viscounts of the West Kingdom, kind of the furthest forward in time, uh, the king is now aging and, and people are sort of seeing what's going to be next for the kingdom. Maybe I can come shape the kingdom in, in my image for the future. So you kind of have this whole story that's going on with having three really unique, very different games in the way that they play, but all have familiarity as well in terms of the art, the board style, and things like that. So I think what we should do is show you a little bit about how each game works, really briefly give you an overview, and then I'll come back and I'll tell you what I think about this series. In Architects of the West Kingdom, players take on the role of prominent architects looking to please the king the most by constructing buildings and working on the cathedral. Each player will use a pool of 20 workers to go to various spaces, gaining materials, money, apprentices to aid in building, and more. Many times in the game, you'll be met with moral choices that might impact your virtue. Having a high virtue means you're in good standing with the king, but it makes life a little more difficult as you can't visit the black market to get materials you need. If your virtue is too low, you can't work on the cathedral, but you will be able to skirt some of the ever-present taxes you must pay. Each time players add an additional worker to a space they have other workers present, that space becomes stronger, giving more materials and perks for each worker present, but your rival architects are brutal and are more than happy to round up your workers and throw them in jail, netting some much needed cash. As players build buildings and work on the cathedral, they will leave workers on the guild hall, which will eventually signal the end of the game, and the player with the most points from buildings and their virtue wins. In Paladins of the West Kingdom, players are tossed into a turbulent time in the West, and as the noble men and women of the land, you must protect your people from invaders in the name of the king. Luckily, Holy Knights the Paladins are on the way to give aid as you spread faith, gain influence, and build strength. Each round, players will use a pool of workers of many colors to carry out actions to increase their attributes in strength, influence, and faith. The left side of a player's board often give them provisions in silver and allow them to recruit and use town folks or develop their board with workshops, making actions cheaper to carry out. Once players are stocked up, they can assign matching color workers to spaces to fortify and build walls and garrison to protect the lands. They can commission to send monks out using faith to gain influence or they can absolve to use that influence to spread the faith. The outsiders that threaten the kingdom can be attacked or converted which will again boost stats and possibly offer end game points. After seven rounds, players will score points for the status of their attribute tracks, points for focusing heavily on certain actions and completing king's orders and at the end of the game the player with the most points wins. In Viscounts of the West Kingdom, players are now dealing with an aging king who wishes to find peace over prosperity. As powerful Viscounts, there is an opportunity to seize hold of the future through decisive action, choosing what is best for the people of the kingdom. Each turn, players will be playing one card to their player board, creating a tableau of townsfolk with various icons and abilities. The card played will dictate how far your Viscount must move, going always clockwise around the board, and then one of four actions will be taken. Trading can convert money, symbols, and silver into other resources and can help players pay debts and approve deeds. Hammers and stone can be used to build up the kingdom with guild halls and trading posts, giving their player new abilities and perks. On the inner track of the board, players can add their workers to the castle using gold and fleur-de-lis, which will gain influence over the kingdom, and transcribing manuscripts using crosses and inkwells can give players bonuses and a set collection element. Players will acquire and use town folks to build a powerful deck full of useful workers, and as debts and deeds are acquired, the game end grows ever closer. Once one or both decks run out, the game end is triggered, and players will then gain points for the buildings built, manuscripts transcribed, and workers who've been added to the castle. Deeds and debts can gain or lose players points, and at the end of the game, the player with the most points wins.
So like I said, you have three games that are all uh, familiar in that they look similar. They have a similar color palette and stuff. Obviously the art is all by uh, Mihala Dimitriescu, the Miko. Uh, and so there's a lot of familiarity and through line, but with each game, they all play very differently, which is really neat. One of the things I really like in the strength of this series, and also with the North uh, Sea series, I know that all three of those games were quite different, although I've only played Raiders of the North Sea. Um, so I'm gonna talk about pros, a couple little nitpicks or cons for each game, and then I'll tell you what I think about them all. Overall, though, I really love this series. There's no game here that I'm be like, this is straight trash. So if you're looking for that take, you're not going to get it from me because I really like all three of these games. I think they're really uh, all valid because they are all different. So with Architects of the West Kingdom, some of the things I really love is how fast all the actions are. You have all these worker placement spaces, and many of them are go here to get some wood, get some stone, brick, or gold, depending on how many workers you have there. So it's kind of go there, grab some stuff. It might get a little bit uh, longer if you're uh, figuring out who to round up and throw in jail and stuff like that. But all the actions are really slick, so the actions keep moving. You're taking one turn at a time placing one worker, so it keeps on moving, which I really, really appreciate. I also like that none of the worker spaces, for the most part, there are a couple, but most of them are unlimited. They don't have any limit to how many people can be there, how many different players can be there. So I don't have to spend time thinking of like, oh wait, which places are blocked? Uh, 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 I can just do what I want to do because they're all, for the most part, open. And that's really the funnest thing about this is that we always talk about it being a worker investment game. Because I can put the same, you know, I can go to the same spot over and over again with multiple workers. And the more workers I have, the better that action becomes. You might throw down a worker and get six wood if you haven't been rounded up already. You probably are becoming a juicy target at that point to be rounded up and tossed into prison. But you can do these kind of big moves and, and really invest in the space to get big hauls of materials and then start to use those materials to uh, work on the cathedral or build your buildings, which is how you get your points in the game. A nitpick with this one, I feel like I have the hardest time out of these three games focusing in Architects of the West Kingdom. Just because you're trying to build cards is the main thing. You can build building cards. Those greenback cards will uh, give you your main hall of points. They might have end game scoring and stuff on them. Uh, but because I'm kind of drawing cards from a deck and then getting my hand of building cards, then trying to figure out a direction, I can't go into that game with a really clear purpose because it's kind of dependent on the types of cards I get and that might dictate then which uh, which of the apprentices I might need to have the right icons to then build. So I find myself basically whatever cards I start the game with getting those built and then I'm kind of like, uh... What should I do now? And that's not really good when you're kind of racing to the end of the game because as people are building their building cards or working on the cathedral, it's also timing out the game. So with this one, I usually, and this is a personal problem, I run into um, the issue of playing too slow, as it were. I'm just, I'm not about my my business quick enough. So that's a, that's a me thing. And I struggle with that kind of thing in most games that have that element, scythe and whatnot. Uh, but Architects of the West Kingdom is really fantastic. So next up, the second game in the series was Paladins of the West Kingdom. And this game I really, really enjoyed right out the gate. It has kind of an Orleone feel because you have these different color workers that need to go to certain spaces. Some spaces require a specific color. Other ones can be whatever color you want. So you're kind of uh, trying to get the right pieces to the right action space. It's not a bag builder like Orleans, like I know what I have, but uh, you're kind of trying to trying to put the right spaces to then activate an action. So I really enjoy that. And one thing I really like is this game is all about efficiency. It's all about trying to stretch your round out as long as you can. There's certain uh, areas, if you put a garrison out, if you, if you use one of your monks and you place them out on the central board, it might give you more workers that you can then use that round. So you're really trying to kind of stay in the game as long as you can. You want to be able to do as much as you can on a round before having to pass and then have to wait for everyone else to finish all their business and then you get more workers because you always get six but you can try to get more in the round. So it's all about efficiency. It's all about stretching out your round as long as you can and how, how can I do that the best? Uh, the other thing I love is there's synergy between, there's six actions basically on the right side of the board, and each set of two will be synergistic with, with each other, meaning one will require strength, but will give you faith. The other one will require that you have a certain amount of faith and will give you strength. So if you start working those two actions, you can start working those two attribute tracks and bumping up and up and kind of get str you know stronger in those areas. So you can kind of 
focus uh, in that way, in a really satisfying uh, way, that is also kind of my nitpick for this one. And again, these are nitpicks. They're not huge, but Paladins, I have found uh, to be difficult to get up on those attribute tracks. Uh, and, you know, when you start doing fortifications, you're building up that wall, you're gonna start needing a, a lot of influence pretty quickly. So you need to make sure that if you're gonna be doing that, that you pair uh, different actions that are gonna give you that influence. It can kind of be hard to get going. And with Paladins, you really have to focus. Basically, don't try to do everything. It won't work out very well because you'll end up at like three or four on each of the three attribute tracks, which isn't super strong and you're gonna kind of run out of room. So you have to kind of focus or else you'll be, you know, punished. Uh, it won't work out as well. So that's one thing that I really enjoy trying to figure out and start working my little engine, but it can, I think, be limiting where if, you know, the cards are coming out, you're trying to do a bunch of attack actions, the cards are coming out, it's just not really working out for you. It might be hard to switch gears halfway through. And there's also those King's Order cards that I've been trying to do fortifications, build up my wall, and none of the King's Order cards have walls. And so I'm like, well, that's not as good because I'm not gonna get points over there because it's too late to get all my garrisons out. I would need to get five. It's not likely to happen. So that can be a little bit limiting in some ways, but it's really great. And again, that's a minor nitpick with Paladins. So last we have Viscounts of the West Kingdom, the newest one in the series and the last one in the series. This one is great because it is a similar weight, I feel like, to Paladins. It's it's on a it's a bit heavier than an Architects, if slightly so. Um, but it feels more streamlined to me than Paladins. There's only four action types you can do in this one. You can basically trade, build, you can put people in the castle, or you can transcribe manuscripts. And everything, uh, as you're playing out these cards into your tableau, are gonna give you icons that help you do one of those four actions. Uh, and so there's kind of a streamlinedness there. The way that the turn order works once you get going is really kind of smooth and simple. You move your Viscount, that'll dictate where you land, which will tell you uh, what area you're gonna put people in the castle or which manuscript you can transcribe because your Viscount will be standing right next to that one. So you'll know exactly kind of what you can do and where. It's really well uh, laid out uh, generally the board in terms of knowing uh, what's where. Um, I also really love that this is a deck building game that goes in slow motion as I talk about it because most deck building games you'll have a hand of cards, you'll play your hand of cards and you'll draw a new hand of five or six cards or whatever it is for your next turn and so on. And here in Viscounts, you're only ever playing one card at a time onto a tableau of up to three cards. And so you're gonna have these cards that are in front of you for multiple turns. Uh, and so it's really kind of about trying to keep a tableau of icons in front of you that really serve your purpose. So maybe if I have a bunch of hammers, uh, I can try to do a bunch of building for these kind of three turns because I'm gonna have these these uh, workers, these townsfolk in front of me for a while. So it's kind of cool to not just get your cards and they go away and you have to wait to get them later. I get a card and I have it for basically three turns. And then there's sometimes the ability to rearrange your player board. So this card that I really want to keep on my board because it has a persistent effect, I can bring back to the front of the line so it keeps it on uh, in my tableau for longer. Stuff like that is really, really cool. And the other thing I really enjoy about this game is it's combo-tastic and it has all these kind of power-up feels because as you build buildings, you unlock permanent icons. So now I always have a hammer symbol. No matter what I have in my cards, I always have a hammer symbol. I can go to the castle and put a bunch of people in the castle and if you get enough in a certain area, they start moving around and moving up the castle, giving you bonuses, which then might uh, trigger something else. There's all these kind of fun combos in the game that I really enjoy. One thing I can say for the downside is I have found when I was first learning the game, and then as I've explained the game to people, it's a bit heavy on the rules overhead, as is Paladins and stuff, but this one, it's just because you're working, you are doing kind of a slow motion deck building. You're putting one card out. The turn structure has like six, I think, phases in it. None of which are very major, but it kind of becomes a, a rules heavy overhead where I have to really kind of go through a bunch of different things just to explain basically one whole turn structure. Um, the nice thing is that once you have the turn structure down, then it starts to flow pretty well, but I feel like I haven't gotten good at teaching the game yet. And I'm like, how do I, simplify how do i break this down better because it just becomes this wall of information that ultimately is all really well integrated and slick but it kind of comes out a little clunky and that might be a me thing um but then there's really cool things of like the the townsfolk that you buy if it costs two dollars uh when you play it into your 
Tableau, that $2 becomes the, the thing that tells you how far your buy count has to move. There's things like that that are really slick in this one that just create um, nice efficiency with how everything works. I'm like, that's just nice because A, it's less things on the card you need, and it's cool to, hey, hey, what it costs is how far it moves, and so it integrates really well. It's very well done. So as it stands right now, the snapshot in time, Architects is my least favorite, if only by yay much, all right? Uh, and it's for those reasons I kind of specified earlier. I have trouble focusing. Um, I can't, I, you know, I just, I can't really ever figure out what I'm trying to do. And that is more of a me problem. It's not necessarily the game's fault, it's me. So I understand that, but it does kind of hamper my enjoyment of the game because I come out of the game like, man, I did really poorly. I'm not great at any of these games for, the matter, for that matter, but for whatever reason, Architects, um, it kind of gets in my way just a little bit. And I do mean only a little bit. Uh, my next favorite is Paladins of the West Kingdom. I didn't know which of these was going to win out. I really, really like both of them. Um, Paladins of the West Kingdom is, like I said, fantastic. Putting out your workers, trying to stretch your turn as far as you can, trying to work up those attribute tracks to get your big, big haul of points. Uh, there's a lot of really cool um, stuff. Um, the thing that held this back from being my number one is that it's just the hardest of them to me. To me, it's the hardest one. It's the heaviest one. Um, actions are expensive. It takes like three workers to do it unless you build those develops. So I'm like, man, I better build those develops. But guess what? Develop takes four silver and money's pretty tight in the game. So it's like, oh, uh, you know, and I like that about it, but it is, <laughs> it can be tough. Paladins can be really tough. So Viscounts is my number one out of these three simply because it is slightly more streamlined feeling. I like that when I add a card, like I said, the value of that townsperson tells me how far I have to move my Viscount so I can kind of get a plan. I have my cards in hand so I can start to plan ahead a little bit so I have some direction. I have the ability to trade for goods and things like that so that I can boost up my other types of actions. The streamlined nature of it and some of the kind of really cool things that are going on, getting criminals and whatnot, are just things I really enjoy that you've kind of seen play out throughout the entire series um, and it just kind of does it in the smoothest way while still being a bigger kind of heavier game kind of closer to Paladins so that wins it for me as Viscounts of the West Kingdom if only slightly the difference between number one and number three is not great they are all fantastic games I really enjoyed this whole series I mean I think it's really cool to have a game series that is familiar the resources are similar the characters and stuff you see will be in multiple games on the cards. Stuff like that I think is so fun. Shem built his own MCU with games, um, and yet each one is really perfectly independent. I could play Paladins and not have any awareness of these other games, and it would not affect my, my time. And that's really important that all of these stand alone as their own thing, but then you kind of get these bonus treats when they are... You start to see the through line, you know, the graphic design on all these is really great in similar colors and everything. So it starts to feel like this bigger world. Let me know in the comments what you think of the West Kingdom games. Do you like them? Have you tried them? Do you want to try them? Do you hate them? Let me know in the comments below which of these is your favorite, if you have a favorite. I want to know uh, what you think. I'm a fan of all three. Viscounts is just really good. That's, it's the combos, folks. The combos got me again. I just like it when you can do stuff. And if this goes over to here and I get this bonus, it just makes me feel really good. And that's gonna be it for me, everybody. Again, let me know what you think of the West Kingdom trilogy in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for enjoying my ramblings on the West Kingdom trilogy. Again, put your thoughts on the West Kingdom trilogy in the comments below, and while you're at it, do check out, we played these two of these games during our marathon of games. We didn't own Viscounts at the time, or else we would have played the entire trilogy during our marathon. We played all of our games in one week, so check out the video right there. If you want to know what we uh, thought about all of those games, we reviewed every game we own, and then more, uh, in our wrapper reviews for December, so check out those, and don't forget to subscribe.